the work must be worthy. It must be intrinsically satisfying. Now, sometimes the intrinsic satisfactions can be overrun because I'm not used to working and I don't want to work and I have to do something I don't want to do, which inhibits my enjoyment of the intrinsic satisfactions until I get used to, to working and those natural resistance starts to erode, then I can start to enjoy the natural satisfactions of working hard and seeing the fruits of my labor. But it's a sad thing when a child at five years old arrives and has never done a chore, has never broken a sweat. It's even a greater tragedy when a 28-year-old has never broken a sweat, has never learned to work hard for the satisfaction of working hard. Only works for extrinsic rewards. Uh, I'll work so I can make money, so that I can go entertain myself. That's a very sad life. and. and Unfortunately, so much of what's done in many school systems around extrinsic rewards really contaminates the atmosphere, uh, really undermines the true satisfactions of knowing and the, and the satisfaction of work well done. That's actually very, very important, how our atmospheres get contaminated. They can get contaminated not only by teacher anxiety, but by the use of artificial rewards and incentives, which demean the joy of knowing, and they demean the student's capacity for intrinsic motivation. One example is the Fun Fridays that we know of some schools that have had. I mean, they have a large Christian school. Every Friday, if the worksheets are all done and the math assessments were satisfactory and everybody's got their homework turned in, then we can have Fun Friday. And what Fun Friday is, is pizza and a movie. Now, that's devastating to the atmosphere. You say, what's wrong with pizza and a movie? Nothing's wrong with pizza and a movie. I would enjoy periodically, Mary Ellen and I enjoy pizza and a movie together. We're not saying pizza and a movie is intrinsically evil. But when you set that up as we get fun Friday, if we get through the drudgery of the salt mines, Monday through Thursday and half a Friday, then we get fun Friday. What the adults are saying to every child, you couldn't possibly enjoy history, could possibly enjoy literature, find great satisfaction in mastering number and learning to write well. We know that you're just doing that for us because we say you have to and because we're so thankful that you've put up with this for four and a half days, we're going to give you what life is really about and life is really about pizza in a movie. That's the good stuff. So put up with the drudgery of math, science, history, and literature, and Bible for, f for four and a half days, then you'll get the good stuff. That's the message that's in the atmosphere when we do these sorts of things. And that's hugely destructive. Even if well-intended, if we give a candy, piece of candy, which, again, we know of this happening, where in certain classrooms where every time a child gives a right answer, he or she gets a piece of candy from the teacher. The subtext, there's always a text and a subtext. The subtext is you wouldn't possibly be willing to apply your mind to this material on your own unless I gave you candy. And that's what the teacher is screaming to every child in her class. So the child says, okay, great, I get candy. I get a kind of a, a pleasure, a satisfaction out of this piece of candy. So, all right, I wouldn't like, you're saying I wouldn't like it apart from this? I believe you. And so all too often, teachers appeal to the more base things rather than the higher things in a well-intended but misguided manipulation of children. And a manipulation of children's affections, actually.